G'day guys, welcome back to the Rugby League Guru Podcast. Something a little bit different today. We're going to go through a couple of the news stories from the last couple of days we haven't caught up on yet. Uh, we'll be doing this throughout the season, uh, probably once or twice a week on YouTube and on the podcast as well. Joining me, uh, if you're not a beers and break evens fan, you don't tune into our Supercoach content. Uh, I've been lucky enough to bring Kat on this year. Uh, obviously, in the Supercoach world, we call her the Rook because she's the debutante. Uh, but Kat has joined me this year as my producer. Uh, very, very glad to have her on board. I've been waiting a couple of years to make this happen. Uh, and very glad to welcome you again, Kat, to the normal rugby league audience. How good? So good. So exciting because I've consumed your stuff for a long time. Big fan of yours. Mm. And now I get to sit beside you and work with you. It's so nice. It's exciting. We actually, we kind of worked together a couple of years ago. Uh, Kat worked for the agency that does a lot of my podcast ads and whatnot originally. So that's how we met. Kat is obviously a big timer in her own content world as well. Optus Sport, Born Offside. Um, give us the rundown. Yeah, I mean, freelance presenter, podcaster, producer, creator. I think these days everybody calls themselves pretty much everything. Mm. Um, so it's it's an interesting job, that's for sure. I do a mix of things. I work in the football space, so the English Premier League, all that kind of stuff. And then I love rugby league. So I'm excited to be doing some more stuff in that space this year as well with you. And then obviously do some stuff myself as well. Yeah, we call it a Swiss Army knife. I think I'm going to call you my uh-huh. Miss Army knife. I love that. Don't You're, mind that one. Off the dome. You you love a nickname. Mm, I do. I do. You you've got a few coming your way. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, at Kat Haddad on Instagram. Where else can they? Haddad H A D D A D. Couple of D's in there. Yeah. yeah don't not, not to be confused with Gigi and Bella Hadid. <laughs> I know it's an easy mistake to make. Uh, but yes, Kat Haddad, and then it's kicking off with Kat on TikTok as well. How good. Beautiful. Now. Let's get into some of the news stories from the last couple of days. Kat, what's on the agenda today? Run us through all the topics. All right. We're going to be talking about Harry Grant becoming mm. sole captain of the Melbourne Storm. That's an exciting one. There's a few re-signings that we're going to talk about. Billy Smith, Ben Turbo and Nathan Brown. We're going to then look at what Russell Crowe is doing to expand rugby league mm-hmm. overseas. A bit of that NFL crossover chat as well. And then we're, we have to dive into the hottest 100. We well. certainly do. Yeah. We do. Unreal. All right. Number one on the list. What do we got? Let's go. Let's get into Harry Grant. So as we know, he has been part of that squad for a while now and he's been given the opportunity to be the sole captain. Yeah, I I didn't see this coming, if I'm being completely honest with you. I I, I don't dislike it. I've obviously been a huge Harry Grant fan for a fucking while now. (laughs) Uh, I think back when he was in the under 17s or 18s, one of the OG could be anything. Probably the OG could be anything, to be fair, Harry Grant. Um, When I look at their squad of Jerome Hughes, Cameron Munster, Christian Walsh, these sort of guys, I didn't see this coming. Mm. Uh, And this one has surprised me a bit. I just, uh, but I also look at it and go, you know what? Harry Grant will be the captain of this side for the next. 10 years. Yeah. So from that perspective, I do like it. I just – I probably didn't see it coming. It probably just surprised me the way it went about it. Um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to sit down with Craig Bellamy and just get his opinion on it. Mm. Um, and, look, reality is, you know, just because Harry Grant's got the C next to his name, does it mean that no one listens to Hughes, Munster, Of course. Welsh? They've got, they've got that experience on their side as well. And he replaces Chris, Christian Welsh, but to your point, 25 years old. So – if he takes on that captaincy at 25, he's got quite a few years leading this team. For sure. And I think that that's the big positive to take out of this. And you look at Harry Grant, um, you know, obviously the Melbourne Storm have a pretty rich history when it comes to hookers at the Melbourne Storm being great leaders. He's a Queenslander. Uh, they, like he, he just ticks all the boss, boxes, Harry Grant. He's skillful. Mm. He's tough. Um, I think Harry Grant's at a point in his career now where, you know, off field, you're not going to get any Wes Naguamas either. So, I yeah, I, I like the move. It surprised me a little bit. Um, I probably thought that, it, you know, and it's interesting that you would have to assume now that Cam Munster is going to go throughout his career without being a captain of the Melbourne Storm, which I, I sort of thought would happen eventually. But yeah. at the same time, is money the sort of guy you want to put responsibility on his back or do you just want to let Mad Dog be yeah. Mad Dog? You know what's interesting is you, although all that content that comes out like, who's the biggest party animal or who's who's just that guy that just talks a lot of shit in the sheds. People always say Munster. Yeah. 
And it makes you wonder if, well, we know that behaviour and all of that and like what you're doing off the pitch is just important as on the pitch from a leadership perspective. So I think that stuff definitely comes into play here. Yeah, I think with a guy like Munster, bit of a rogue, which is fantastic. I think you just let him be. Just yeah. let him do his own thing. Um, yeah, so Harry Grant, uh, Captain Melbourne Storm. I probably thought he would get like a uh, – I wouldn't – I thought – co-captaincy with Christian Walsh. I thought he'd be a really good fit for it. Uh, but heading into the future, I think that you guys like Husey, Munster, Christian Walsh, I think they're guys as well that they – I think they're comfortable enough in their NRL careers and where they're at and mm. who they are that they don't need the C next to their name. Okay. I think there's guys in this competition that if you were to give it to other people on the team, maybe there'd be a bit of mm. jealousy or a bit of drama. I just – I just can't see that down at the Melbourne yeah. Storm. So I think Harry Grant is a good choice. I think he's going to lead them for the next, you know, eight, nine, ten years, whatever it might be. Um, the more I think about it, the more I like it. It did just surprise me. But it's a pick for the future and I back it. Yeah, I rate it. I really like it as well. All right, let's move on. So like we said, we've got a few re-signings. You're a big fan of Billy Smith. So talk to us about this one. You love the fact that this 24-year-old has re-signed for three years. Yeah, I've said for a long time and um, obviously uh, my brother's in the Rooster system and, you know, every year um, Trent Robbins sort, sort of gives the same speech to all the juniors about how, you know, if you do the right thing by the Roosters, the Roosters will back you. Um, you know, the Roosters cop a lot of shit for not having a heap of juniors and buying and selling players and all this sort of stuff. But I think when you get a little insight into the Roosters system, you realise how good they actually are with their players. Um, and I think Billy Smith is a shining example of that. Uh, Billy Smith, uh, union boy, went to Scots, uh, you know, ended up in the Roosters system. He's had just about the worst injury run you could possibly have. Mm. He, you know, Billy Smith, respectfully to him, with his injury run, has no right to be in the NRL anymore. Most guys would have packed it up by now. Most clubs would have packed it up by now. Uh, the Roosters haven't. They've always backed in Billy Smith. Trent Robinson absolutely loves him. And when Trent Robinson gives this speech to the juniors about what he expects from them and what they'll get back from the Roosters, his number one example is always Billy Smith. Yeah. If you show the commitment that Billy Smith does, we will stand by you. If you are this sort of person around the club, like Billy Smith is, we will stand by you. So... And, you know, I, I've been talking about the last few weeks on Bloke in a Bar and on the Guru podcast, you know, you know, I would pick Suwali at left centre mm. just because he's a superstar and you've got to have him in there. But I've said the entire time, it will not shock me in the fucking slightest if Trent Robinson makes a tough call and plays Billy Smith at left centre. Now looking at it and going, okay, Suwali, mm. I trialled him at left centre last year. It didn't work. Billy Smith did work at left centre. Now Suwali is not going to be there in 12 months' time. Billy Smith is going to be there for the next 36 months. Mm. I'm starting to think that Billy Smith will probably get that left centre spot, yeah. which makes it very interesting. Are they going to drag Dom Young down from Newcastle to not play? Mm. I doubt it. Yeah. Are they going to sack Daniel Tupu from this side? I also doubt it. I think that the music could stop and Suwili might not have a chair around one. Yeah, I think I was going to say earlier as well, Suwili leaving at the end of the season – if you've got someone like Billy Smith, you're saying Trent Robinson loves him, you're going to foster that. You want them to build really solid partnerships within that side. You don't want Suwili coming in this season, developing something great and then leaving yep. at the end of it and then you've left Billy Smith to kind of fill in the gaps next season. And it's really tough. Like who's who's the best winger out of Suwili and Dom Young? As a whole, I'd probably lean towards Suwili mm -hmm. but – He's not going to be there next year. Dom Young is. Yeah. Who's the best centre out of Sue Ali and Billy Smith? I'd say Billy Smith. Who's mm. the better footballer? Probably Sue Ali. But you're picking a left centre, not a footballer. Yeah. One of them's going to be there in the future. So, yeah, I, I think this is fantastic for Billy Smith, for him to lock down a three-year deal. And, look, there's every chance that he's injured the next three years and this is an awful deal for yeah. the Roosters. But this is what Trent Robinson is talking about and this is what he's about, that if you are a good guy around the club and you, you, know, you never give up, you show this sort of attitude he wants to see – good things will come your way. Yeah. So congratulations to Billy Smith. Uh, he's had a lot of people doubt him over the years um, externally, but I'm sure internally there would have been people, the Roosters, that would have sort of said to Robbo, hey, fuck, we're looking at another injury here. Mm. This is another top 30 spot. What are we doing? Um, and, you know, I think he showed this year that he is a tremendous footballer and he's still got a big future in our game, Billy Smith. I'm still not ruling him out of – sort of making it into the rep arena over the next few years. I think mm. that when he actually gets to put – if his body can hold together for an extended period, 
I think Billy Smith can really make a splash in this competition. So congratulations to Billy. Good little signing by the Roosters and that left centre spot is going to be wildly interesting. Definitely. And with Dom Young arriving in that side too, I'm very excited to see what happens there. Mm. All right, we've got two Manly Seagull re-signings. We've got Ben Travojevic. We lo- I love the Travojevic family. Big, big fan. I love that they are just manly locals. They've made their way through the si- – speaking of players, you know, that have made their way yep. through the system, this is one of those families as well. Uh, he's extended as well for three years until the end of 2027. How do we feel about it? Absolutely love it. Uh, and, look, obviously it's easy to say that after he scored three tries in the first half the other day <laughs> against South Sydney in a trial. I don't Honestly. want to talk about it. Yeah, let's not talk about it because, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, with you, I don't give a fuck. Um, but Ben Travojevic, he has been a wildly talented guy for a long time. Um, Kat, coming through the grades, he was, you know, he's sort of, if you've got Jake and you've got Tom, mm. he's sort of the guy in the middle. He can mm. sort of play centre, but he, he can play look, back row. He kind of looks like a mix of the two. He's well. kind of like a mix of the two. And the raps on Ben coming through reserve, like coming through the junior grades were, he could be the best of them, mm. um, which I think put a lot of pressure on him. Um, he's had a pretty bad injury run to start his season, uh, to start his career, which, you know, obviously if your last name is Travojevic, it <laughs> tends to be a thing, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, he is wildly talented. Uh, he was fantastic coming through all the junior grades. Uh, they're currently in a situation where Ola Kowatsu's just signed a million-year deal, so he'll be on the right edge. Left edge, it's him and Josh Schuster. Um you know, Josh Schuster, we've seen him play left edge before and he was actually fucking unreal there. Mm. I know it's easy to bag Josh Schuster at the moment, uh, but he was fantastic when he played left edge uh, there. But Ben's, you know, he's putting his best foot forward as far as, you know, drama off field or, you know, that sort of stuff. You know Ben's never going to make those mistakes. You know that part of this Travojevic family is that you are – zip it up and you're good to go all the time. His body's just got to hold together. Um, I... I think it'll be really interesting on this left edge because you've got two wildly talented guys mm. playing for one spot. Um, ben can play centre, but I, I don't think he will. I think that he will play um, in the second row. You've got Coley, you've got Garrick. Garrick seems to be all but locked in to play centre this year from what I gathered. Um, looks like he'll play right centre and Kohler will play left. So I actually like Kohler moving to left because it'll help Luke Brooks and potentially Josh Schuster defensively mm. after that trial. Ben Javoyevich, a really good shout there. Yeah. I think that signing Ben Javoyevich on a three-year deal, I reckon that might also be a little rocket to Schuster. Saying, hey, you're here, but we've got options. Yeah. We've, you're not and the we've, guy. We've got options in and around you that are loyal to the club. People love them. I, I think I'd pick a Ben Travojevic that you know is kind of going to give his all every single week. Yeah, for sure. And if I'm Schuster, I'm going, hold on. I am I was the young superstar. I've just re-signed a big deal. They've gone out and signed a 5'8 long term mm. who will play on the left side and they've signed a three-year extension of a left-edge back rower. Where do I sort of fit? And this is where I honestly think this would be the best thing for Josh Schuster mm. for him to feel a little bit uncomfortable because Josh Schuster coming through the grades and this is this is a compliment to him and yeah. it's the reality of, of, of rugby league. He's been the superstar coming through. He's been the first pick guy in every team he's ever been in. Right mm. now, Josh Schuster isn't the first pick so- guy in that manly side. And I can't wait to see what we get out of him. Yeah. He will sink or swim and they'll know very quickly. I hope he swims. And if he does, yeah, we've always said it, Josh Schuster could be the most talented player in this fucking competition. Yeah. You've always stood by how naturally gifted he is as well. There is, There's not many more naturally gifted guys than Josh Schuster. Um, and for most people, that's the hard bit, getting that talent. For Schuster, it's been the easy bit. Yeah. Now, he probably needs to take a leaf out of the Ben Travojevic book that's got him to where he is, um, head down, ass up. And once again, if he does, you know, he could be one of the better players in this competition. Yeah, a bit of healthy competition is probably exactly what a player like that needs, yeah. who is on a very healthy deal with yep. the Manly Seagulls. And I think a lot of those fans want to see that. They want to see an ROI on Schuster. Yeah, So for I sure. think that's pending for sure. And moving back to that, you know, as I said, it's really easy to bag Josh Schuster at the moment because he's coming off a shithouse season at 5'8". That was fucking awful. I'm not defending him in any way, shape or form based on last year and when he played 5'8". But when he played back row, he played tough, which is mm-hmm. what I want to see from Schuster. Because the other thing is he's silky, his natural ability. He's also fucking enormous. <laughs> Like there is nothing Schuster hasn't been born with. He has got the size to be able to dominate on an edge, which we've seen before. Um, so, you know, the the beauty of this is the ball is completely in Josh Schuster's court. If he wants to hit it back, 
fantastic. You can yeah. be one of the best players in this league. If you don't, we've got other guys. We'll be fine. I love it. Yeah, I'm excited great. about it. Very happy for Ben Travojevic. All right, let's talk Nathan Brown, also Manly Seagulls, re-signing. This is a one-year extension, but I think this is very exciting for Nathan given – He's 30 years old. I don't think you see as much re-signing happening at that age. Um, but also the departure of Christian Tui Palutu was a big reason for this re-signing and the fact that he will also be starting with Manly this season. Yeah, I actually really like this one. I've always been a fan of Nathan Brown. Um, from when he first sort of came onto the scene, South Sydney Tigers, I always really liked him. Had a bit of shit in his game, but... It's rugby league. You need guys with a bit of shit in their game. I've always loved Brownie. When he was at Parramatta, I thought he was fantastic. Obviously fell off at the back end. Um, Made his origin debut a couple of years ago. I thought he held his own there. Yeah, look, I think Brownie, uh, I think he's going to be pretty important to that Manly side this year now that he's in that squad. Uh, Matt Lodge is obviously returning from injury and whatnot. Um, We're not quite sure how he's going to return at the age he's at and whatnot. Uh, Tanel Paseca. I thought he played his best footy last year, but he's returning from injury as well. Then you got sort of Toa Sipley, who's very handy. He finished last season in really good form. But Nathan Brown, he just I, – I just think he adds a lot to a footy side. I like his ball playing. I think one problem that Nathan Brown had at the start of his career, Cap, was – he was a little bit selfish. And I unless you really understand footy, a lot of people wouldn't have seen this in his game. But Nathan Brown would be a guy. And Paul Gallen was like this in parts of his career where you could see that the team would have, have, have a set of six and they'd have certain spots they'd want to get to. And then Nathan Brown would get the ball and he would hit and spin and he'd... So, like he, he just do things to get himself extra meters or an extra offload that actually wasn't helpful to the to the set of six, and I think he learned the hard way and he matured a lot. Paul Gallen did the same thing throughout his career. He used to ship me to no end watching Paul Gallen play front row, but then he'd also kind of play five eight at the same time. Yeah. It was so fucking painful to watch, it, especially in the Origin arena. But then you got to the back end of Gal's career, and I would say that someone, I would say Shane Flanagan, pulled him aside and said, "Hey." You're the toughest bastard on this field. That's what I need you to do. Just do that. Just and do I think that. Nathan Brown, if he's able to do that and not try and, you know, crazy offload and tackle break and all this sort of stuff all the time, um, I think he can be a really, really good get for Manly. But it is something throughout his career that has annoyed me a little bit, that he mm-hmm. can be a little bit selfish. I'll, I'll give you an example. I was watching like a, 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 the, the trial the other day and uh, there was a winger – uh, sorry, I was, I was, it was an SG ball game and I was watching a winger got the ball and he was coming out of his own end. And what you like to do when you're coming out of your own end is you like to sort of get to the middle of the field so then you can go left or right. What this winger did, uh, this is an example of sort of not sticking to the game plan, being a little bit selfish, there was an opportunity for him to step of his left foot and go down the right sideline to get an extra 10 or 15 metres. And he did that. Mm. And you look at it and you go, okay, instead of running for 10 metres to the middle of 30, he ran for 25 metres, which is great. But then what happened in the next three tackles after is because you're on the sideline, the defensive team, they just umbrella their defence mm. and you can't get out of your own end. Right. Classic example of that, you would have been better off going to the middle so then you can go to e- either side and actually start a set properly. So you might give away 15 metres in, on that first tackle but you gain it. You, you, you gain it on the tackles after that by, by being yeah, able to go through your actual sets. You're playing with the the, con, the idea of longevity. Like where yes. is this going? How's it going to benefit the team? What's best for time? the team, not my stat sheet. Yeah. And I think that's something that it's taken Nathan Brown a, a little bit in his career to be able to grasp. Uh, but I think he can play a really important role for them this year. And I love Jake Travojevic. I, I start to wonder if maybe his best position is sort of front row instead of 13. Mm-hmm. And I think Brownie could potentially jump into that 13 role. They play Aloye sometimes there. Miss me with that. He's a front row forward as well. Gives them a lot of options of how mm. they want to play their footy. Um, yeah, I like it. And depth. Unreal. Yeah. yeah. And once again, I think this is where maturing and ageing is so beneficial for a player. Uh, I've watched the Manly Way content series as mm. well and he's – They've given him so many raps on that as well. He's, um, you can tell that he's in really, really good mental state. He's bringing a lot to the boys right now. Yeah. I love as well. And I think I, I've only watched one or two episodes of Manly Way, but I think he won like for the new recruits. I think yeah. he, he won like the best of, of the, that day, yeah. uh, which was good to see. The thing I love about Nathan Brown too is that he isn't a first grader that's had everything go his way. Mm. He's a tough hombre had the shit kicked out of him in the last yeah. few years. Um, got that grand final experience but fell out of that side in the weeks leading up to it. And I think that shows you the sort of guy that he is, that he was on the outer at Parramatta. They went on this great run, but then they got to the you know the biggest stage, the brightest lights, and Brad Arthur went, oof, 
I need a guy here. Mm. And he turned Nathan Brown. So a lot to offer still. I think he's going to be very, very handy, handy for the Manly Seagulls. Handley for Manly. Handley for Manly. How good. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's move on. Now, this is one that I was very excited about yep. because I'm I'm a bunny supporter and therefore I love Russell Crowe. Yep. Russell Crowe has voiceovered this rugby league explainer for an American audience. This is obviously part of this NFL relationship that's going on at the moment, but let's talk about it because, I mean, I sat through all five minutes of it because – there's nothing better than hearing Russell Crowe talk about rugby league. I um, This is really weird timing, but I actually I went back and watched, um, I think it's called South Side Story the other mm-hmm. day, my missus. Um, do you remember that one when the Rabbitohs came? I, yes, I do. Not when they came back into the comp, but when they signed like uh, Kidwells, Funganars, all those sort of guys, uh, the Armani Army, I think they were called back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was fucking unreal. And he was front and centre, narrated, either narrated most of it or was the main speaker in every room. It's when he had light, when he brought in the Book of Feuds and everything. And um, I think he might have directed that. It doesn't shock me yeah. in the slightest. Yeah, that would not, I, I'd almost put money on that. Uh, but even just listening to Russell Crowe in that show, like, and there was things that I look back on now that, you know, I sort of think, oh, fuck, that's a bit lame. But the <laughs> way he delivers it. Not lame. He just had all these guys buying into it. Like yeah. to sit there in the change room, pull out a big book and blow dust off it. <laughs> Like when you just think about that on its own, talking to a group of first grade footballers, like it, it just seems ridiculous. But they all brought into it to the point that David Kibble actually asked him if when they played the Warriors, if he could do the process for him. So Russell Crowe, he's got a very special ability to engage people. Obviously, mm-hmm. you know, in my opinion, one of the greatest actors on the planet. Yeah. Uh, incredible. Very passionate about South Sydney. Going to America, I, I think that part of, you know, obviously South Sydney's a, a very famous brand, but it, it doesn't shock me that man, uh, that South Sydney, Russell Crowe's team and Manly, Hugh Jackman's team are playing <laughs> each other. Round one, I think that's tactical by the NRL. Um, you know, we've seen so many famous people wearing South Sydney hats and jerseys over the years via Rusty, like... I think Snoop Dogg, Tom Cruise came uh, to a couple of games. There is a very iconic Cristiano Ronaldo standing with Russell Crowe Gun. image. Yeah. I love it. I, I like to show people and remind yeah. them of that. And this is the pull that Rusty has because of who he is. Um, and I, I think he was the perfect per- person to do it. Uh, great voice for it, obviously. And I actually thought it was a really good video. I thought it was yeah. very – I thought it explained a lot of things really well. It actually – there was a lot of things that, like, he said that the way he explained things that I thought, fuck – like I, I, if I tried to explain <laughs> rugby league to an alien, I don't think I could have done this good a job. I love how you've compared Americans to aliens there. Yes, well, <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, that's it. harsh, but um, <laughs> shout out to you, Americans, septic tanks. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was really good. I enjoyed it. I like that we're. St- I know that there's a lot of Australians that are like, oh, I hate American crossovers. Blah, blah. Mm. Why? Just enjoy it. Mm. Just fucking embrace it. You know, they're leading the way when it comes to sports in a lot of ways. We are 10 to 15 years behind traditionally. Mm. I think we're starting to close that gap. Um, and the more we close the gap, I think the better it's going to be. Yeah, I mean, like I'm not one to talk. I was at a Super Bowl party yesterday. How so was that? It was really fun. I enjoyed mm. it. It was a Culture Kings yep. um, NFL AUNZ event. And I think they did a great job yep. of promoting the game. I'm not an NFL. I don't follow it closely by any means, but I know a lot of people in Australia do. So I think like this NFL influence, I suppose, is actually an exciting thing. Why shouldn't rugby league be a game that people overseas are tuning into? We've talked about the fact that I lived overseas and that was 12 months of my life where there was so little rugby league Mm. that I had to really dive back into it when I got home because it was so hard to follow. I had no idea what was going on if I wasn't on my phone all the yep. time. So I'm all for the game expanding and growing and kind of following the lead of the likes of the Super Bowl, you know? Oh, for sure. And look, I don't talk too much about it, but I'm a big Pittsburgh Steelers fan. I follow them very closely. Like everyone gives me shit because I don't follow an NRL team. <laughs> my team that I do follow is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm. Uh, where Cat's sitting, there's a couple of jerseys in those lockers. I think there's, you know, two or three Pittsburgh Steelers jerseys in there. Uh, we're, not, we're not doing great at the moment. We made the finals, but... We were just filling space realistically. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like I've always followed the NFL very closely. Um, I The thing that I think that rugby league needs to take from the NFL is the storylines and the storytelling, which American sport so good at. does better than anyone. Uh, it's incredible. You look at 
Um, you know, some of the documentary series. And we are starting to catch up now, which is fucking awesome. Yeah, I love great. it. Uh, but you have a look at, you know, there's um, there's a show called America's Game, which is one of my favourite shows of all time where it just – it focuses on one Super Bowl winning so- – like the, the team that won the Super Bowl that year and it goes through their entire season. And, mm. you know, uh, this is from – some of them are from 40 years ago. And even back then, they had the foresight, to, okay, let's record everything. Let's get everything on tape so that we can do these sort of things. Um, one of my favourite shows ever, America's Game, it's unreal. Even like the basketball. Yeah. I reckon in my life I've watched seven games of NBA maybe. Yeah. Uh, but I religiously tune into podcasts for the storylines just to know what's happening. Because it's – for me – because I don't understand basketball, it's more interesting than the game itself. No, absolutely. I'm a huge – I just get around NBA culture so much. Yep. I think the way that they've even had the fashion crossovers. You look Mad. at Jordans and like the influence all of that has had. There's no reason why you can't have that in the NRL, yep. at least on a national level. Like they have that kind of pull over people. And you have a look um, – you know, I know the New Zealand Warriors have been very – uh, up and about on social media about you know the outfits and look I'm not I'm you know I wear the same three things every fucking day as you guys know I'm no <laughs> fashionista but I love the players expressing what they enjoy I love just and you know what it shocked me to my core that did you see which team yesterday had out that like their players dressed up for Super Bowl day and they took photos as they walked in oh, oh, you know, did you, I, did, did you, you haven't seen it I I'll give did, you 17 guesses at which team it was was I, it Dolphins no nah, it wasn't Dolphins I don't reckon you'll get it. It shocked me who it was, but I was like, hectic. That's mad. Well, it's not Penrith. No, Canberra Raiders. Canberra Raiders. Didn't see it coming at all, but unreal content. Thought it was great. All the boys dressed up differently. Some of them came in like suits. Some of them came in outfits that to me, I was like, what the fuck was that? But anyone that knows fashion, would, I'm sure would be like, that's mad. Yeah. That's hectic. Uh, the New Zealand Warriors have spoken about doing it for a long time. Uh, I think the Broncos did it. The Broncos actually did it in 2020 and it blew up on social media. But then the 2020 Broncos didn't win another fucking game and they went into their shell and thought, yeah. oh, no, we can't be – if we're not winning, we can't be different. Which I think that if you are going to do this stuff – and, you know, I, I hope the Canberraiters keep doing it. I reckon it'd be unreal. And, you know, you're, you're, you're friendly with, you know, a number of NRL players and whatnot. Like, I think these guys would love the opportunity to do Absolute. that once a week or whatever. Absolutely. I, when I, were, I was part of this event recently, it was mm. a footwear event – uh, and I got a message from the guy that was running him. He was like, can you tell me the most stylish NRL players because I want to invite them to the event. And I was kind of having an I, uh, I was listing players I knew and whatever who I thought would be keen to go, and I'm like, there's a lot of players who yep. put a lot of effort into their fashion and they look great, and there's a page called League Fits yep. on Instagram, and it's mostly NBA, but we need something like that. Yep. It's just celebrating what they wear when they – you know, they're out and they look great. And I mean, Nathan Cleary, these guys dress so well. They've got six sponsorships. There's so much opportunity. Yeah. And you even have a look over in the NFL once again, like um, the name that's been very popular recently, Travis Kelsey, yeah. uh, tight end for the Chiefs, obviously dating Taylor Swift. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, you know, he dresses unbelievably before all these games and everything. But his brother, Jason, who plays for the Philadelphia Eagles, well known for just wearing like the most dad outfits mm-hmm. of all time. But he's become very popular off the back of that just because he is who he is and he owns who he is. And I fucking love that. And there would be so many guys in the NRL. There'd be guys like like Nath, stylish, and they'd knock it out of the park. But then there would be a lot of just you knock about Aussie guys, especially down there in Canberra with a lot of country boys. But I reckon that they would get a heap of attention off the back of it. It would be unreal just to see the different personalities and what they go for. And, And once again, I could not care less about fashion. Yeah. But I would find that interesting. Yeah, I agree. And so, if you want us to do a content series on the uh, the different fits, the different fits, I, I would love that. I'm It'd down. Be great. I'm down. That's. I think that's where we we cross over in our interests as well. Apparently, yeah. so that's great. We can do that. Um, speaking of Travis Kelsey, mm. let's also just touch on this Taylor Swift impact yep. that we've seen. The Taylor Swift effect. It's polarizing. I think that's just the nature of Taylor Swift. She just is quite a polarizing character. It's it's like a love or hate situation, and I don't necessarily agree with that. But you can't deny that she has brought so many eyes to this game. Why is it polarizing? I, I know it is, but why is it? I genuinely think it's kind of this swifty culture. And when you have such a fanatic audience, mm. it's kind of this thing where if as a female, if I'm not a Taylor Swift lover, I must be a hater. And therefore I'm not for the girls. I'm not out here to watch the girls do well, which mm. is absolutely not true. 
I just think, you know, there's plenty of talented people. We don't need to have eyes on one person. But, yeah, I think I think it's the Swifty culture in and around Taylor Swift that might be quite polarising. And I, but, but I just think, like, fuck, if it gets more eyes on the NFL, great. Something How is that like, a bad thing? I think <laughs> something like $30 million. Yeah. And she had 26 seconds. Yeah, great. And it's like on the uh, uh, like if Taylor Swift, if them flashing to Taylor Swift a handful of times throughout a game annoys you. I mean, please, you're the problem. You're the problem. <laughs> but how can I, like, go yell at a cloud, please. <laughs> um, I Yeah, I, I, I think it's been entertaining to watch. My, my favourite thing of the whole thing, to be honest with you, was the social media clips of, like, wives saying to their husbands, like, Oh, she's made Travis Kelsey yeah. who he is. And that's something that would <laughs> shit me as well. Um, like, and, uh, you know, it would be the same as, you know, you're saying, oh, you know, Mary Fowler. Like now yeah. people know who Nathan Cleary is because of Mary Fowler. Yeah. And to me, Nathan Cleary is my universe. He's the guy. <laughs> yeah. But the reality is Mary Fowler is an international sports star. Fully. Completely. More, like, like pe- pe- people overseas could trip over Nathan Cleary and not know who he fucking mm-hmm. was. Mary Fowler, not a hope in hell. Mm-hmm. He's a worldwide talent, um, and I, you know, I, I love that. I don't yeah. like it's. It's great. I think it's unreal that you've got Nathan Mary um, together. I, I, I it, it blows me away how much interest people have in it. Once I again, I couldn't really care. Two people <laughs> are dating and are happy together. Mad. Go live your best lives. Do your thing. Sweet. Yeah. Um, just happen to be two sporting stars, which is entertaining, but yeah. whatever. Uh, but, yeah, I, uh, the the backlash to Taylor Swift and whatnot, I don't get. I thought it was hilarious that, like, betting agencies, you could bet on how many times she was going to appear. I think the overs-unders was five and a half, which I, I was doing the bloke in a bar show while the Super Bowl was on, so I had it live and I was sort of just keeping mm. an eye on it. I reckon I saw Taylor ten times and I, and I wasn't yeah. even watching it the entire time. Yeah, no, I, I can confirm it was something like that. It was... Pretty full on. There was at one point they got her um, drinking a beer and stuff. And it's I like, saw that. Whoa, yeah. Taylor Swift having a beer. That's crazy. At the Super Bowl, no way. Um, but I love the Mary Fowler, Nathan Cleary stuff. Because yep. that for me is my two worlds colliding. Yes, yeah, yeah for sure. And yeah. I was, I've was, i welcomed it with open arms. I think it's wonderful. I, I just, I cannot see a negative with it in any way, shape or form. I don't no. know why it upsets people. I don't know why. Yeah. I think it's because people are worried that it's it's unlikely Mary Fowler would move to the A-League. She's going to stay yep. playing in the WSL, which is, you know, the, the English Premier League of women's football. Like you're not going to yep. leave that. Yep. Nathan Cleary could end up in the Super League. He's because not going to Super League. I, I, I love these two together, but I, I surely, surely that can't work out. I know. It would just have to be a long-distance relationship for quite a while. Have fun with that, Nath. Yeah, have fun with that. Speaking of Nathan Cleary, he always rates pretty well on the Hottest 100 list. So let's talk about Roasty's Hottest 100 because the voting's just ended for that. Yeah. Now, I have to talk carefully about this because I don't want to get cancelled so Mm. soon into my... I also don't want you to get (laughs) cancelled. But um, you can do most of the talking on this one. Thoughts, yeah. on, thought, thoughts on Hottest 100? Are you willing to let us know who your top 10 are? Well, first of all, I think that the way that Roasty has built this has been sensational. I absolutely love the content idea. I think it's fucking hilarious. Yeah. I think it's great that all the boys have got around it as well. I know from talking to players, there's a lot of banter within the clubs where guys finish and that yeah. they're higher than these guys on or whatever that, it might be. On that, the funniest thing last year was obviously when Roasty released the Hottest 100, Jacob Host replied, because he didn't make the 100, he replied, oh, 101st again. <laughs> See, great year. I love that. It's unreal. <laughs> um, I noticed the other day, which I think is, and, you know, like I, I, I've done it a bit with the Parramatta Eels over the last few weeks. Like for me, having a collaboration post with the Eels, mm. massive. I love that. I noticed the other day. The Gold Coast Titans did a collab post with yeah. Roasty asking for people to vote for AJ Brimson, which How I think good. is just so good. That's like the, these these NRL clubs that are starting to have a crossover with content creators, whoever it is, it is just fantastic. I love it's, to see it. And if your club isn't doing it, you should be absolutely peppering your club to do it because why the hell wouldn't you? I agree. It's like... It's the banter is so good. It's it's such a joke at the end of the day, but yeah. as if it's not an opportunity to have some banter within the club and have a bit of a laugh. It's so, so yeah. good. Yeah, like you have a look at the content over the last few years that like Hello Sports done with Manly. Um, you know, love that sort of stuff. You know, I've done some stuff with Parramatta. Bunny sent me that jersey a few weeks mm. ago, which was unreal. Um, there's just like like the Broncos do stuff with Kempi occasionally. Like just all that sort of stuff. I just think it's unreal, and I think it is just such a 
such an obvious one that clubs should be doing. Yeah. And I, if your club's doing it, shout out to them and congratulations to them because yeah. more clubs should be doing it. The Titans reaching out to Roasty to go, hey, let's do something about our player getting higher votes I on love that it. thing. And it's, you know, it sounds stupid, but that like, that hottest 100, it, like it's becoming a thing in rugby league. It's a talking point. Yeah. And, you know, if, you're, if, if you rank highly on that, let's be honest here in the world, if you're good looking, you're going to do reasonably well. Oh, yeah. It's a great talking point. I like. I, I, I just think Roasty has absolutely hit that for six. I love every aspect of it. I think it's so much fun. Um, I think there's been – you know, it's going to be interesting how it changes over the next couple of years as mm. well. I think um, off the dome, I think KP's been uh, right at the top the last couple yes. of years. Uh, KP then went for the old Slim Shady, dyed his hair blonde, which I think he looks amazing with. <laughs> I'm going to be drafting him very early if I can. Um, <laughs> I would probably have KP right up there. Um, I w- I've always been a fan. Obviously, Cam Murray. Yes, Cam Cam is always up there as well. Cam will, He's a real crowd pleaser. Yes, I think Cam will always be up there. Um, I, I'm i a bit of a Pappenhausen guy too. More, you're into a very classically handsome guy. I'm into you? a classically handsome yeah. guy. Yeah, 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 for sure. I'm willing to I'm willing to wear that. <laughs> um, I think Harley Sexy Shields from the Gold Coast Titans, uh, <laughs> maybe because he doesn't have the um, you know like the NRL career at the moment to back it up. Maybe he'll rank a little bit low, but a very very good looking rooster there as well. Um, I just I love the concept cat, and I think it's just going to continue to grow over the next few years. I think so too, and I once again think it's just a fun banter it's laughter it's seeing the the lighter side of the sport which i mm. think there's so much potential for that i think sometimes we just focus too much on the negative yeah. stuff and i guess that's the point of us having this conversation is looking at the the happy things that are happening in it happening in and around the game and the fact that the boys are getting around it is a sign that they obviously love it too um but i did almost miss putting in my votes yes. and i messaged roasty and i was like roasty come on and he reopened this is, it for this you. This is really important for me. I need to get these votes in. Okay, I want you to tell me who who'd be your number one. Just give me a first and a last name. Don't need anything more. Who'd be your number one? Stephen Crichton. Reach out, Critter. He, reach out. How he's, good, he's Stephen Crichton. He's engaged. Oh, of course he is. Don't reach out. <laughs> Don't reach out, Critter. Do not reach out. Um, congratulations, by the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Stephen Crichton. Good pick there. I like that. Yeah, Very good. good where, where do you think Critter will rate? Oh, I believe he and Tino tied at 10th last year. Last year. They were up there. Mm. I might be wrong on that, but I did see something where they were tied and I'm not going to disagree with that. I, I would put both of them higher than 10th. Has, has KP won two years in a row? I think so. I can check. Something like that, yeah. I something think KP's like had a pretty good run. Oh, and, and Cam Murray's always up there. I think Cam Murray's well. always like a podium guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is a huge accomplishment. Yeah. And N- Nico Hines is always up there too. Oh, of course, yeah. Nico. Yeah. Yeah. It'd actually be great to see like in, you know, 20 years' time when roasty has been doing this for a long period of time to see like the average rank for guys over a career because mm. like I don't see Cam Murray ever falling out of the top five. No. Like the, honestly the only thing stopping Cam Murray from a top five finish every year might be like a fucking train crash or something. He is. Which, yeah. We don't Unlikely. wish on you. At no, all. of course no. not. Touch wood. Touch wood. Um, but yeah, very. I, I love the concept by Roasty. I think it's got legs for the next couple of years. It's had legs uh, for the first few years. It's been fantastic. Agreed. And um, yeah, exciting times. Yeah, I think all that's left is a photo shoot of the hottest one hundred. Anyway, yeah, it would be cool if you could, even if if Roasty was able to get like the top three or something yeah. together. It's just hard when you do it because it's so close to the start of the season and yeah. hard to get guys together. But like all these clubs do their photo shoots and everything, and it, so it'd be unreal if all the clubs are on board with it yeah. and they were able to send Roasty all their like stock images that they've had from the start of the year for him to put together. Yeah, um, that'd yeah, be so good. Unreal. That'd be all so right. good. That do us. That that does us. We're done. A few topics there to cover. That was fantastic. Uh, guys, as I said, uh, I'll be doing a few more of these throughout the year. We'll probably do a weekly one or two of these, catching up on news and whatnot, all in one place for you guys. It'll drop on YouTube and the Rugby League Guru podcast. Uh, Cat will obviously be joining me for those. If you're not, guys, make sure you go follow Cat on Instagram uh, at Cat Haddad and on TikTok. TikTok. You can just search Cat Haddad as well. Cat Haddad as well. Fantastic. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, we'll see you next time on the Rugby League Guru Podcast.